Dark energy is another great, big, fascinating, interesting, unsolved mystery in modern astronomy. Dark energy. Let me, let me just take a second here and to think about what I mean by the word dark. You know, sometimes people hear dark matter, dark energy. Ooh, dark means we don't know what it is. It's mysterious. No, I mean dark in a very literal sense. Dark, something is dark if it doesn't give off light, if, there's, if it's not lit up. Remember, I'm an astronomer. We use our telescopes to study the universe. What, is this, what does a telescope do? It picks up light. So, when I say there's dark matter out there indicated by how, you know, galaxies orbit around each other and how stars orbit individual galaxies, all this sort of thing. When I say there's dark matter out there, I mean there's whatever it is, it's not giving off light that I can see with my telescope. Same deal with dark energy. Dark, not in the sense of mysterious, not in the sense of unknown. Dark in the sense of whatever it is, it, I don't see it directly with my telescope. I'm only seeing it through other things. You know, I, I can see stars and galaxies and they're acting in such a way that that's not how they would behave if that was the only stuff out there. And so therefore something else is out there. What it is, I don't know, but it's not giving off light, so it is dark in that sense. Okay, so dark energy. The story of dark matter goes back to the 1930s. There's decades and decades and decades of evidence that dark matter exists. Dark energy is a much more recent discovery and is, well, it happened in 1998. So here's what's going on. Astronomers, okay, so on 1998, it is discovered. People are studying the expansion of the universe. Studying expansion of the universe. Uh, it's the universe is expanding. It's the result of momentum from the Big Bang. The Big Bang started the universe off expanding, and the universe continues expanding bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's what's going on. Um, and then people thought, hmm, well, how could the expansion change over time? And, you know, the expansion is, the expansion of the universe is how distant groups of galaxies are moving away from each other. It's expansion of the universe. That's Hubble's law. Hubble's law. The velocity is equal to the distance to a galaxy times some constant, h naught. You know, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us. It's, it's, it's the ongoing expansion as a result of the Big Bang. So people are thinking, what could influence this? What could change the rate of expansion of the universe? And, you know, we have these forces around, well, there's electromagnetism and nuclear force. No, it not make any sense. The only force that we could think of which could ever influence that would be gravity. Only gravity could change this. And what does gravity do? Gravity attracts things. Gravity is a universal attraction between all pairs of objects in the universe. My right hand is pulling my left hand towards each other. They're each one pulling on the other one, pulling towards each other. That's what gravity does. It's an attraction between all pairs of objects in the universe. So, if that's the only long-range, big, average force which could influence the expansion of the universe, what's that going to do? It's going to slow it down. As things are moving farther and farther away from each other, then gravity is going to tend to slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And so the question people were trying to ask is, how much is the expansion of the universe being slowed down by gravity? How much is the expansion of the universe of the universe being slowed by gravity. So, Big Bang Theory, we'll talk about that, but that is, you know, kind of comes out of the 1930s and 50s and 60s and all this sort of thing. And so, for, for a long time, people are studying the expansion of the universe, trying to figure out how it's being slowed by gravity. And for many years, astronomers are thinking that, well, really, there's, there's kind of kind of three possibilities. If there's enough stuff in the universe, there's enough mass in the universe, then gravity could eventually overwhelm the expansion of the universe. Things are expanding, expanding, slower and slower and slower, stop, and then gravity could bring things back together. So our universe began with the Big Bang explosion, we'll talk about that in detail, and then expand, 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 and then stop, gravity stops it, and then pulls everything back together, and so then our universe would end in a big crunch. So they're seeing three possibilities. Possibilities, what we call a closed universe, where the universe will end with a big crunch. You know, the universe has a beginning point, and it's got an ending point, too, where it's all going to come together. 
Another possibility is that no, gravity is not strong enough and that things are going to expand, 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 getting slower and slower and slower, but, you know, they'll just keep expanding. So, you know, so, and, and this would all have to do with how much stuff there is in the universe. Based, so the three possibilities are based on density. The density of stuff in the universe. The number of galaxies there, there are per cubic megaparsec in the universe. If there are enough of them, then gravity will be strong enough to stop the expansion, bring things back to you. If they're not, then, so that would be a closed universe if, if we end in a big crunch, or an open universe, and forever expanding, expand forever. Gravity is strong enough to slow it down, but never bring it to a stop. So the people think this is the this is the big question of our universe. They start counting up stars and galaxies, and they oh we're we're nowhere near enough to cause the universe to end in a big crunch. It's probably going to expand forever, but just keep having trouble measuring the rate at which the expansion of the universe was slowing down. In order to do that, you need to measure the velocities of distant galaxies and their distances. Measuring velocity of a galaxy is easy, no problem. Doppler effect, redshift, where you take the you know we know that there here these absorption lines, you know, the absorption line of hydrogen. Hydrogen has one in the red at 656 nanometers, and there's this one and this one. We know where all these are. We look at a distant galaxies, and it's like, oh, these are all stretched out by 10 nanometers. So that means, therefore, this galaxy is moving away from us with math, 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 this velocity. Okay, we can do that sort of thing. Very easy, very straightforward. And so measuring the velocity of a galaxy is easy. Measuring the distance to a galaxy is hard. This is where you need things like Cepheid variable stars. And briefly mention those, these big red giant stars that get brighter, fainter, brighter again in a regular cycle. And the longer the cycle is, then the, the, the more the peak luminosity you've got. And so if you see a Cepheid variable star with a very long cycle, but it's really, really faint, oh, that allows me to calculate how far away it is. And so in the 19, uh, 1998, people were using a new standard candle. So uh, Cepheids are one type of standard candle. Any object where I can estimate what its true luminosity, the true total amount of light it's giving out is, and then, uh, then estimate how far away it is based on the, the observed brightness, what I see with my eyes. In 1990s, people were using a uh, white dwarf supernova. White dwarf supernova to measure distance, and then you put that together with a uh, Doppler effect, and then you get, you know, then you, then you can measure expansion rate. Expansion rate. And then you want to see, well, how much has the expansion of the universe slowed down since the beginning? How much has gravity slowed down the expansion of the universe? And the data kept being kind of strange. There were two competing groups. Um, 1998 was the year I started graduate school. I went to, down to University of Colorado Boulder and started studying astrophysics for real, all this sort of thing, working toward my master's and PhD in astrophysics. And um, it was just a really cool time to be in astronomy because all the cosmology people, people studying the universe, go to conference and it's like everything's changed. There were two competing groups that were measuring distances with white dwarf supernova. You know, every white dwarf supernova kind of has a fixed luminosity, so basically how bright it is tells you how far away it is, that kind of stuff. And the data didn't make any sense, and it didn't make any sense. And they're having trouble measuring how much the expansion of the universe is slowing down. And so they ultimately, rather than just publishing the results, which didn't make sense, they kind of talked to each other. And they're like, are you getting this? They're like, yeah, we're getting this. Holy cow, you're getting that too? We've been totally weirded out by this. No, really, you know, it's, it's back and forth. And it turned out that what they discovered is that the expansion of the universe is speeding up. The right now, the universe is expanding. Galaxies are moving away from each other faster than they were a billion years ago. And so they discovered, discovered expansion of the universe is accelerating. Galaxies are moving away from each other now faster than they were a billion years ago. Um, this is why I love science. Science is so awesome because the universe exists and it has this infinite capacity to surprise us. I mean, you would think, here we are, you know, we're really smart. We've been doing technology and computers in the space age for decades now. We should have stuff figured out. Not a chance. What we know is this big compared to what's out there. And then even after decades of great geniuses trying to figure things out, you would think that we'd have most of these big issues solved. 
Not a chance. Everybody's thinking, well, how much is the expansion of the universe slowing down over time? The only thing that could ever expand, affect it was gravity, and gravity would tend to slow it down. So how much is it slowing down? Turns out it's not slowing down. It's speeding up. Galaxies are today moving away from each other faster than they were in the past, and so what's up with that? That's where we are. Um, dark, so, so there, okay, so there must be something out there which is causing galaxies to move away from each other, to cause galaxies to accelerate, to move faster and faster as they move away from each other. That requires energy. You have to have energy to make things move faster and faster. So whatever is causing this must be some form of energy. Can I see it? Nope. Therefore, it's dark. Hence the label, dark energy. Dark energy is not a theory. Dark energy is not a hypothesis. Dark energy are two words. They're a label for our ignorance. They're a label for a process we don't understand. And then um, people went back to the drawing board and to their equations and their computers and have proposed many different ideas for what dark energy might be. The, the theory, the, the, the actual theory, are then a set of equations which, which give you the exact dynamics. And so there are certain ideas of dark energy. There's one they call quintessence, where it gets stronger over time. And then there's the cosmological constant theory, which is just it would be steady, the fixed amount property of space. That's the one most astronomers think is probably right. But there are many different ideas. And we're in the process of gathering data and trying to test this. You know, it's like, well, is this acceleration, is the acceleration at a constant rate? What are we talking here? What's going on? We just barely discovered it. I mean, it's 1998. That's not too long ago. Um, again, I'm a young person, and yet I got to see cosmology totally upended. What's really cool is this dark energy is when you calculate how much total dark energy must be out there in the universe in order to make this happen. It's colossal. It's amazing. It would require 70% of the stuff in our universe to be dark energy. Dark energy. And then, of course, we have dark matter. You know, we got that as well. That's about 27% oh, roughly dark matter. And then everything we can see with our telescope. Stars, gas, dust, gal galaxies, atoms are like 3% of the universe. Um, stuff made of atoms. So this is bizarre. Check this out. This is amazing. What this means is that if we're interpreting the data right, maybe we're not. I mean, <laughs> the universe is big and interesting and complex and weird. Um, but this is our best guess at what we got now. Based on the data, I would say that it appears that our universe is 3% made of atoms. That's all the stars and gas and dust and everything we see in the whole universe is 3%. 27%-ish of our universe is dark matter. We don't know what that is. Probably some sort of mysterious subatomic particle like neutrons, protons, electrons, but some sort of particle we've never discovered or detected or measured in any way directly. And then, of course, there's dark energy, which is 70% of the stuff in our universe, and we don't have the first clue what that is either. I mean, that's amazing. That's wonderful. This is fan. I didn't get into the astronomy business for all the really cool stuff we know. I mean, that's cool. But I got into the astronomy business because of the vastly more interesting and amazing and enormous stuff that we don't know. We don't know what our universe is made of. And that is wonderful and amazing and that's worth knowing.